afternoon, Howard Wig here for the State of Clean Energy Think Tech Hawaii, and we have a full plate for you today. I'm not here alone. I'm with co-host John Cole of the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, and to kick things off, Keith Block, commercial building manager, something like that, for Hawaii Energy. And then after Hawaii Energy, we are going to bring on David Bissell, CEO of the KIUC, Kauai Island, Island Utility, Utility Cooperative. <laughs> and when he comes on, hang on to your socks, because if you don't, they're going to be <laughs> blown off. Let's start with Keith and you have been doing some horrendous things, or great things, with Restaurant Row, because you can imagine how big the air conditioning system is for that entire complex, and you have done something with it. Yeah, no, uh, we wanted to, to bring a video today for you to show you some of the projects that we mm -hmm. do. This one, a little bit unusual, because like you said, it's a huge project. I mean, if you can imagine how big Restaurant Row is, mm -hmm. the cooling plant that cools Restaurant Row is equally as huge. But that's what makes it really, really interesting. Um, interesting to me, hopefully interesting to your audience as well. I realize I'm a little bit of a tech geek and a, mm -hmm. uh, an engineer, but hopefully, yeah. you know, it'll our, resonate our, with your... Our audience is techie. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, let's take a look at the video then, because mm -hmm. it's a pretty cool system. We replaced new chillers without ever letting the building go down. Um, they've got new equipment, reliable equipment the ability to meet their diverse load at night. For these guys, it was really number one. It was how, how can we save money in our central plant? We're spending too much money on maintenance. We're spending too much money on our utility bills. You know, we have to find a way to save. And that's when we came in and came up with these. The new technologies we installed has the ability to ramp the systems down, run more equipment, even though it doesn't sound like it's going to be more efficient. But when you run more at a slower speed, they tend to get a little more efficient. And that's really what we're utilizing here, is trying to get those efficiencies driving the plant. So Hawaii Energy helped us a ton. Um, at the end of the project, we metered the equipment, we looked at the utility bills, um, ended up coming to agreements that we saved almost a mil over a million kWh annually just from the central plant equipment. Um, that equated to a $250,000 rebate back to the owner at the end of the project, which was I mean, just icing on the cake at the end. Okay. Keith, what, I didn't get any numbers out of that. What was the before consumption and the after consumption? Yeah, I got a bunch of numbers here for you, but mm -hmm. uh, what, what you actually saw there were two 800-ton chillers, mm -hmm. uh, three cooling towers, uh, variable speed frequency drives on mm -hmm. all the pumps. Mm -hmm. So they took out uh, three uh, chillers. There were two 575-ton chillers that they took out. Uh, one 250-ton chiller, and again, replaced with two 800-ton chillers. Um, the variable frequency drives that they put on all the motors allows them to save pumping, motor, or pumping loads when, when they're not at full load. But the 800 tons they actually increase some of the capacity of the plant, but the 800 tons allows them to run at part load where the, mm -hmm. those chillers are, are really efficient. They're, they're actually magnetic bearing uh, compressors, mm -hmm. so they're called uh, oil-free, you don't have to oil them, but yeah. the compressor shaft actually floats on a magnetic mm -hmm. force field, so mm -hmm. uh, extremely efficient at part load, so you know that's why they put so much capacity on it, so they can run at part load. And then variable frequency drives on all the pumps and uh, allows them to scale back the amount of water they're pumping. If you don't have to pump so much water, you don't have to cool so much water, you save on your pumping loads. So the entire project itself is about a $2.5 million project. Uh, our incentive to that was $249,000. So almost 10% of the cost we uh, contributed to that project. It's saving the customer about a million kilowatt hours per year. So that's about $169,000 savings to the, to the customer. And, and actually this whole thing, as you can imagine, a project of that scope, uh, you know, took years to, to get going, right? Mm -hmm. So it actually started with a, fun, a study we funded uh, back in 2012. And from that, they said, you know, the study determined that this was the best design and then two years of construction. But the other thing that was key about this too is in that two years of construction, they were able to stage a bunch of different things. So they never lost cooling to the entire mm -hmm. facility. Mm -hmm. So truly a, a, an, a, an extraordinary project. I was, you know, we're thrilled to have been a part of it. And uh, 
and we worked with some good contractors, you know, to, to do that installation. But And you saw the contractor there that was, you know, he's equally proud of that project. It's really an interesting yeah. project, I think. And there's so many tenants in Restaurant Row, they probably all have different time schedules, but because of variable frequency, you probably got sensors all over the place saying, I don't need any cooling right now, and I need all the cooling I can get right now, and it'll automatically sense and flow in accord with the uh, demand, yeah, which I would think would be a kind of a variable demand. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. have a, a, a nightclub there that's open till late at night. Mm -hmm. They have an office tower, so there's, you know, traditional office hours. So, yeah, that's the other reason why I was saying, you know, the, the two chillers allow them to stage those chillers so that they operate uh, opt optimally. And this whole system came with a, a new controls package where mm -hmm. you're doing exactly what you said, yeah. monitoring different uh, set points. You know, you, you, with a chiller plant of this size, there's various things you can do. You can change your set points on your cooling, your, uh, your temperature of your chilled water, but then you've got to pump more of it and then blow more air across it to get the same temperature in the building. So mm -hmm. you increase loads on your pumping and on your fans, but you save it on your air, you know, your compressor or the other way around you can make colder water mm -hmm. that you don't have to pump as much mm -hmm. so i mean it's truly a difficult task to optimize this and in the past what you used to do is you'd kind of find an optimal point at some point in your load during the day and that's just where you'd leave it set at this one is dynamic it, it senses yeah. all those points and changes everything mm -hmm. as it's going along so it's really a optimal system cool real cool design well cool so to speak and you heard it from me first. You estimated a 1 million kW weight savings per year. My seat of the pants guess is it's going to be uh, more than that. Yeah, and, and the key thing there, too, is, you know, a chiller plant's going to last 20 years, so that's a million k, uh, kWh per year mm -hmm. for at least 20 years. And, you know, mm -hmm. it has the flexibility as their occupancy changes. You know, they get more people, they get less people. Mm -hmm. You know, they can flow with it yep. and, and yep. still be operating at that optimal level. Yeah, beautiful. Well, we have to bid fond adieu to Hawaii Energy at this point. And this is Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you, Keith, for the video and for saving us at least 1 million kWh per year for the next 20 years. This is Think Tech Hawaii. We will be back with part two, David Bazell of KIUC in a moment. <laughs>
Bissell, CEO of the Kauai Island Utility Cooperative, and I do research in a reading about a lot of utilities across the nation and certainly follow what Hawaiian Electric is doing. And I think that KIUC, out of the hundreds of utilities nationwide, may be number one in terms of getting close to 100% clean energy generation. As we will see, somehow the phrase small is beautiful comes to mind here. Does uh, Kauai still just have 65,000 people on it or up to 70 now? Or it's about 70,000. 70,000 people. If you drew a circle with a quarter inch diameter around where we are in downtown Honolulu, you'd probably have 70,000 people. So you've got a certain advantage there, but you've done exceptional, exceptional things. So welcome, David, and why don't we get rolling with the first slide, because we don't have all that much time here. Well, what in the world is this? Thank you, Howard. <laughs> what this slide is, and I, I'm, I'm not a technical person. I'm a little intimidated up here mm, on a think tech well, thing. I, I'm an accountant mm -hmm. and a financial mm -hmm. person, so pretty easy numbers, 40% and 70%. 40% is where KIUC is today on our renewable portfolio standards, and that's up from about 8% six years ago. So we're really pleased on Kauai that we've met the state uh, 2030 renewable target already. And the 70% is kind of our next goal on Kauai. We've been in strategic planning as a co-op. We've been holding community meetings over the last couple of weeks on multiple locations on the island of Kauai. And I'm pretty confident that our board's gonna come out and say 70% is the new target on Kauai by 2030. So we we'll, should stay 10 years ahead of the state mandates mm -hmm. and we're making great progress on doing it with an awful lot of solar, solar, uh, biomass. We've got legacy hydro, trying to do new hydro on mm -hmm. Kauai and really doing some innovative first in the industry type of things with battery storage. And we've broke, there's been ground broken on the Solar City Tesla renewable uh, PV project with storage. So it'll be dispatchable solar, first mm -hmm. large uh, dispatchable solar project done in the industry. We'll be taking 52 megawatts of uh, energy generated during the day. It'll be a 13 megawatt uh, PV field, running it into a battery and bringing it out at nighttime during our uh, peak, uh, most expensive uh, part of our uh, dispatch profile. Wow. Did I tell everybody to hang on to their <laughs> socks? I mean, I read about other utilities. This is way, way, way above what we're used to. Other utilities are struggling even to get to first base on, in this area. Well, in, in Kauai, we have a lot of advantages mm -hmm. compared to Oahu in particular. We've got a lot of land, underutilized land, so we can do big solar projects. We can do a lot of big solar projects without eating up the, the land and really having a mm -hmm. visible um, footprint mm -hmm, problem on mm -hmm. there because we've got so much, we've got tens of thousands of acres of land available. For, so even if we did a thousand acres under PV, it's yeah. not going to be taking up a, a huge amount of the island. Mm -hmm. But the problem we have is the, the uh, lack of available load during the day. We've, we've already put in 30 megawatts of utility scale solar on Kauai. And keep mm -hmm. in mind that our daytime load is in the 50 to 60 mm -hmm, megawatt mm -hmm. level. We've got a uh, 6.7 megawatt biomass plant and we also have five or five to eight megawatts, say, of uh, any time of the day uh, hydro energy. So very little uh, available load during the daylight periods. Mm -hmm. We've maxed that out, so the next frontier is moving at the nighttime. And, uh, amazing, amazing. Why, why don't we look at the uh, next slide? And John, John, why don't you take over from here? <laughs> Oh, I'll let David do the slide, but first I wanted to congratulate him. He recently got uh, a Energy yes. Transformational Award. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it was um, given by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and presented by the governor last um, month. And it's for a lot of the things that David's talking about, uh, the, the quick move toward renewable energy, some of the high penetrations they've been hitting and how their system has been able to handle it, and just how they've been moving forward 
at a marching pace, whereas it seems Oahu has gone quite a ways in, in the rest mm -hmm, of the islands mm -hmm. under the HECO companies, but KAUC has really been leading the way yeah, and that was yeah. part of the award. Mm -hmm. So congratulations on that, David. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, John. I just want to be clear, it's not my award, it's KAUC's well, yeah. award. And it, it really does belong to our engineer mm -hmm. and operations people on Kauai because they're the ones that are pushing the envelope technically to make this happen. If you talked out of mainland grid, any of the operators out there, they would say this is absolutely impossible what's being done mm -hmm. on Kauai. So my job is really to say, yeah, it makes sense. Let's do it. Let's figure out how to make mm -hmm. the money or obtain the money to uh, make the project happen or to sign the deals. But it would not happen without the engineers. We've got great engineers on Kauai at KIUC and our operators that, that are actually making yeah, this happen. And, and you said you're an accountant, so you're the numbers <laughs> guy. You just let them do the real work there. Yeah. And yeah. We're kind of interesting from an accounting versus uh, operations and engineering thing because what I say is, can we do it? Why not do it? Mm -hmm. And what we're really fortunate is my engineers at Kauai have a culture of saying, why not? Let's, let's try mm -hmm. this. Uh, mm -hmm. Make it happen. We'll figure a way to make these uh, industry-leading uh, projects go forward. Yeah. They don't have, yeah. they could be saying, no, 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 we absolutely yep. can't do yep. it. And nothing will get done. So I, I really want to give those mm -hmm. guys credit. Well, let's take a look at the no smoking uh, slide here, and that, now you get some specific numbers coming down here. Yes, we've hit a really remarkable 97% renewable at times. On February 10th on this slide, 97%, uh, 77% of that coming from solar. Uh, on Kauai, we have really two legacy power plants, our Port Allen plant, which is shown in this picture, which is a lot of uh, uh, small diesel units. And then we have a Kapaya plant closer to Lahui. And every day now when it's sunny, we're shutting down the entire Port Allen plant for hours at a time. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the, that was the legacy. That's what KIUC and Kauai Electric before us was founded. That was the predominant power plant mm -hmm. for the island of Kauai 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. And now it's shutting down every day. And mm -hmm. clear days, 80 to 90% renewable. We couldn't do it without having those. Having uh, the batteries we've been putting in place, we have about mm -hmm. 10 megawatts of utility scale batteries that KIUC owns. Uh, six and a half megawatts of that is lithium ion ones that are at our uh, on a whole the solar plant. And those those batteries are every day going off hundreds of times to help us with frequency control and to keep our grid stable with all the renewables, in particular intermittent renewables and solar that go up and down all, all, every time the uh, cloud comes around. So. A lot of uh, technology in play. Yeah, yeah. J just that one slide is, we, we, we could spend hours <laughs> del delving into every one of those, but it's, it's all, all exceptional. Why don't we go to the next slide, because we we got to move quickly here. This is a mind-blowing slide, at least to us uh, te techie types. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it really is. Yeah, and yeah. what this is, this is a KIUC dispatch from a, it's not necessarily a typical day, but it's not an atypical day, March 4th, 2016. And it's showing starting at midnight going forward till midnight the next, the next evening, our load profile. And you hear a lot about the uh, duck curve in California and a little bit here. I don't even, I don't even know how to characterize this curve mm -hmm. because during the midday hours and, and when the sun's out, we have just a remarkable amount of, of solar energy. The, the, Greenish, or greenish color at the bottom is the biomass plant that's just producing stable about 10% of our use. And below that is the blue is hydro. And above that is the yellow solar. And in prime sunlight from between 11 to 2, you, you can see on there, the remaining piece I didn't talk about is our fossil fuel, the black piece there. And you can see it gets down to just a very, very small amount of fossil mm -hmm. fuel. Typically, that's one small generator running for to keep our system with uh, frequency and uh, a little bit of backup on it. And it's nowhere else is, is the curve like that in place in the United States. So yeah. it's pretty, pretty and then, uh, amazing. And then look at those jagged lines. You, even at the bottom, that's, that's where your batteries kick in, isn't it? That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're really looking at those jagged lines, I think that's a 15 minute mm -hmm. chart on a, on a second by second, it would be up and down you know, hundreds of times that mm -hmm. it can go that fast. And it's not unusual to see if some of our big plants go from 12 megawatts down to two or three in a matter of a minute or so mm -hmm. as a cloud comes over. Yeah, and the, the Kauai is pretty gosh darn cloudy too, yeah. so, yeah. Cloudy and, and the frequent winds. It's the, mm -hmm. it's the cloudy mm -hmm. days with wind coming by quick that 
really impacts the system. If it's just cloudy, it's not problematic because it kind mm -hmm. of keeps stable. But when you have fast-moving clouds that we get yep. on Kauai, that's, uh, that's what's the challenge from yeah. the technical side. Yeah, yeah. again, we, we could spend hours on that slide. But <laughs> Can we go back but, to that? I just have one question <laughs> oh, okay. I wanted to Can talk we go today back to that, about. Uh, so yeah. the black areas that right now are the um, oil or diesel generation, it's, to go all the way, those are going to have to be filled in by renewables. So, that's correct. I mean, do you envision more biomass, batteries, some kind of mix, or? That, that's a perfect that segue. If we move forward to the <laughs> next slide, that talks about okay. what we're looking at on Kauai. And we don't, it's, on Kauai, we don't have a huge amount of options with today's technology. This is this slide shows really the conventional biomass or conventional renewable opportunities in Hawaii, and we've done one biomass project, but we just don't have the scale to do more on Kauai, so the cost would be prohibitive. Uh, biofuel really throughout the state now and throughout the industry is the pricing's not there. The pricing is typically cost of uh, diesel or oil plus. Um, waste energy, we're too small on Kauai. It's clearly possible over here and working on Oahu, but we don't have the scale on Kauai. Geothermal, we have no, we're, we don't have that there. We don't have the, um, um, the, the thermal uh, activity that we do on uh, the Big Island in Maui. And tidal wave and ocean isn't commercially available. There, you know, there's some really uh, cutting edge uh, technology and research being done in Hawaii, mm -hmm. but it's not commercial right now. And wind, we're, wind is also uh, very widely deployed on Maui and the Big Island and over here on Oahu. But with our endangered species on Kauai and small mm -hmm. scale, wind's essentially off the table. So that leaves us hydro and solar. Mm -hmm. And that, that was well illustrated in the previous slide there. And speaking of slides, we'd better move along to, to the next uh, slide. This is a cutting edge, uh, our draft strategic plan on Kauai that we've been working on. Again, Kauai is a cooperative, a little bit different than on the other islands that are investor owned. So we've got an elected board and the elected board is, works with our members. Everybody that um, takes electricity on Kauai is a member of our cooperative and they elect the board and the board then sets the draft, sets the strategic plan and we, they've recently updated the strategic plan with a draft that we've been out meeting with the community. And I talked earlier about the 70% renewable. And the, the se second item under there from a financial side is important. We could go to 100% renewable in a couple of years. We could double down, quadruple down on the PV and batteries. But there's technology risks on that. Uh, you don't want to put too much, too many eggs in one basket. If the prices of, of batteries drop radically, we don't want to lock in 2016-2017 uh, pricing if it's going to be a third less or half less down the road. So we're, we really are looking towards technology risk as a big part of our, our timeline. We want to ladder in our renewables on Kauai, um, similar to what's being done on, done by, on debt with most uh, enterprises, because you don't want too much at any one time. So mm -hmm. we're doing that. Um, we continue to have cost control as a focus on, on our island. We're cooperative. Uh, we don't want to spend money. We don't want to have to raise rates. So we're really trying to watch our uh, our expenditures carefully. And then we're moving to rate design. Rate design's huge on Kauai, huge throughout Hawaii and really throughout the industry. And we're concerned about rate fairness between uh, member classes with, right now with, we've got 1950s rates and they just wasn't, weren't set up to have, uh, on Kauai we have 12% of our membership has uh, rooftop and distributed solar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we don't want that to be uh, subsidizing the ones that have it, subsidized, being subsidized by those who don't. So we've got to look at our rates. We want to get more fixed costs, which really reflect the way the grid operates. The grid, the cost of operating the grid doesn't go down or change. If all three of us are the grid and we each have, two of you have PV on your roof, the grid costs aren't going down. It's just mm -hmm. would all be funneled mm -hmm. over to me. And we don't think that's fair and want to mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. hard on that. So that, that those are really big pressure points on Kauai that we have to get, we have to get straight to uh, help us move forward and be in a position to be the best utility we can. And I'm, I'm gathering that built into this is possibly time of use pricing? Yes, we, are, we have a, a small time of use pilot program on, mm -hmm. with about 300 members. And we tried to keep it simple because we, we really wanted to just assess whether we could change behavior. So what we came up with was for four or five hours in midday, 
we're offering a 25% discount to our retail rates. And it's early, it, it went into effect Valentine's Day. Our, our first report showed people are shifting uh, some of their usage into that time, but there's kind of a other outcome and we didn't anticipate, but their usage is going up throughout their whole time frame. Mm. So they're moving more <laughs> into the cheaper period, but they're also using more throughout yeah. the entire period. Yeah, so yeah. we'll see if that holds, holds uh, fast going forward. But we mm -hmm. do believe, and it makes total sense, that PV pricing is, gets cheaper and cheaper and to the extent the cheapest way outside of uh, efficiency to bring improvements and improve the quality of life is to move more of the use into that lowest cost generation period. And we, we believe we're gonna have pretty aggressive rates during that time frame, probably much more than a 25% discount, but maybe down to eight, 10 cents a kilowatt yeah. hour for a four, yeah. peri yeah. four hour yeah. period. And we could spend a lot of time <laughs> on this, but we are running out of time, and I believe we've got another slide. Yep. This is uh, just a little bit of kind of Kauai uh, specific items. Uh, we want, of course, every company needs to maintain a prudent financial structure. Big one for us is we're now really looking at should we be regulated by the PUC. Uh, when we were formed in 2000 and Two, we had a commitment, we made a commitment to the PUC that we would stay regulated for five years. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. It's now well past that, it's been 14 years. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. our board is increasingly starting to question whether we need that. We've kind of grown up, uh, co-ops are in 47 states and only 12 of them have any, 12 states have any form of regulation. So we're definitely on the very high end of regulation for a co-op. We don't, you know, as a member elected board, there's nobody, we don't need a watchdog to say take care of our membership because if if the public is not mm -hmm. happy with mm -hmm. what's happening, they're going to vote at a new board. Yeah. So we spend a lot of money on that, a lot of time. Are good people at the PUC. John knows, <laughs> the former commissioner, <laughs> and they they really do a good job. But they've got mm -hmm. limited resources, and and we're starting to believe more and more of those resources are and should be focused on the investor-owned utility and not on the cooperative. So mm -hmm. we look at that. That's not going to be an overnight movement, but it, it's definitely a, a direction that the board is interested in pursuing. Wow. Not bad for a uh, small <laughs> island. We're just about to wrap up. Uh, John, any parting question? No, comment? thank you, David. Nope. I did <laughs> wow. <laughs> Very interesting, and I'm really impressed by the, the work KIUC is doing and moving forward toward the RPS so quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, my guess would be the PUC says just We'll keep our hands off. You just keep doing what you're doing and let the rest of the, not the rest of the state, but the rest of the nation see what in the world you're doing and see what they, they can emulate here. Well, thanks both yeah. of you. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got a good group on Kauai, good management team, good board, and a good engaged community. So we're firing mm -hmm. on all cylinders and, ho and hope to continue. Wow. Well, on that cheery, very cheery note from us techie, clean energy type people, we need to sign off Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii with John Cole of HNAI and our honored guest, David Bissell, CEO of KIUC. See you later.